It's finally it. We're finally in the weekend that we get to see this brand new Mercedes car. So what are the expectations? What time is it gonna gain? And can it genuinely shock the world now in Monaco and really continuing for the 2023 season? So much talk has been really made about these new upgrades coming out. So much expectations, trying to even put down the expectations, sometimes even raise them. So much speculation also on how the car will look like, where it will perform better, what it will do. But essentially we have the basics of it down and what we should actually expect from this weekend coming down into Monaco. I mean, first of all, let's talk about the relative time it should gain. In a recent news article and recently what's been talked about, the first time that we saw these gains and what Total Wolf was talking about, what George Russell and what Lewis Hamilton were talking about, their first essential really opinions on it was this car will gain over a second. It will be a car that's a lot faster. They can do a lot more time on it. But I think that's them going off of their wind tunnel, which is a future version of the car we are going to get in Monaco. They're talking about what this car can really achieve by the end of the season because they're not going to be gaining a magic amount of time right now in Monaco. That's just the reality. And as sick as it would be, it's not going to happen. Monaco is also a track that I don't really believe we will see a really representative time for the car. But what the current number is and what they're saying right now for what they think they will gain in Monaco and ongoing with the current set of upgrades they have is two tenths. Changing up the whole car and the philosophy for two tenths isn't the final number, but I'm going to assume this is what they're going off of for now, just because their car is restructured and them actually being able to gain the full amount of time out of it won't be achievable in Monaco till they actually have a set track to where they, they can get in their full three practices, where they can really set up the car to how they like, really optimize it to how they like, and finally get down the real balance of the car and how the setup should properly be made. In Monaco, we won't see that. And in reality, we probably won't even see it in Spain because I know that they're bringing more parts to Spain to even add on upon, upon this really B-spec car. Monaco is only the first set of it we're going to get. Spain will be that second set. So from the Imola Grand Prix not happening, now they're coming in two successions because the optimization of this car right now is key for them to actually have a car that's going to outperform really the rest of the field. They have to gain essentially about a second really in their car to compete with Red Bull on most tracks. And that's not even talking about the straight line speed that they have to shred. What these upgrades are really going to do and what expectation we should have for them going throughout the season is making a new type of base for the car. The car right now is kind of the best we're going to get out of the W14 with no side pods. Yeah, they probably could have added a couple of upgrades. They could have added a couple more things. Maybe they could have pushed out three or four more tents, but that was the cap of the car. The cap of the car wasn't as high as really the cap of the Red Bull car, which is still going up slightly, but it is. So now with the new base, their level of upgrades, their time that they can gain, the what they can do now on track, the balance that they can have, the driver confidence, everything else now is really just improved for the new base model. That is what is being put down for them to race with a new base model to where they can add a lot more upgrades and try and gain that second to second and a half to be ahead of Red Bull. Now, will that happen in 2023? The chances are slim, but it's a possibility. It would really take a miracle for them to really nail what they got down in the wind tunnel. Here's the thing, and here's something that we always have to remember. Mercedes is a team that even through years that they had practically a max out car like 2020. I mean, even in 2021, how much they upgraded the car. They are a team that knows how to upgrade a car. They've had a lot of mistakes happen between 2022 and really the beginning of 2023. Certain people were even fired due to those mistakes happening in the wind tunnel with scale models and other things that I even I really don't know about that the Mercedes squad just made mistakes in and it put them so far behind. Like Total Wolf even says, they're practically a year behind in their data because of certain mistakes, going down a different concept, following something that really wasn't there to begin with, but they were adamant that this concept was going to work. So now with the new base and what they're trying to really extract from this, it will be another step in, I guess, a backwards direction for maybe two to three races. But as the upgrades keep coming, as they learn to optimize the car, 
this car will perform better and it will give them a chance at fighting the 2023 hopefully title but it will also give them a chance in 2024 2025 before the regulations change in 2026. This is their last chance. If they don't shock the world this year, it's got to be in 2024. Because making a comeback like that is insane. But if you look back at what Red Bull was trying to do throughout really... From 2017 to 2021, they were able to come back. And they were practically a second down when 2017 started. And they ended up becoming the fastest car in 2021. If not, even with Mercedes. Now, there were regulation changes that went against Mercedes that did not help the Mercedes car but Red Bull was gaining consistently and they were able to make it by the end of the regulations. I think Mercedes can make it by, I would probably say the three fourths part of 2023 and really into 2024, they will be an extremely fast car because that will be enough time for them to actually build up this concept and work upon it and use that wind tunnel data to their now advantage rather than disadvantage. Another thing that this concept is supposed to bring that I keep mentioning, but I'll talk about it more in depth now is relative time that it can gain off of the car rather than its no side pod design. As I mentioned before, the no side pod design was almost capped out. Now the Red Bull, the RB19, is at almost its capped out point. I mean, as we can see, they added a new floor upgrade that they claimed would be two tenths. They gained about a tenth on it, but every other team gained a lot more. Aston Martin, for example, gained a lot more and is actually still very competitive with them, regardless of the fact that the car gained an upgrade, Aston Martin gained a way bigger upgrade. Now, same with Mercedes. In Australia, when they were able to optimize their car, they had a track that performed really well, which I think the track that they can actually really compete with the top teams will be Spain. Spain and any track that's very low to the ground, they can run their car as low as possible. They don't have to worry about the side effects of really their previous car and now their new car that's happening. They can run it as low as possible. They will perform very hot. That was the good thing about the W13. When that car ran low, it was a very competitive car. It was close to the most competitive car on the field. They struggled big time with the porpoising. They fixed that. So now they can run their car lower, but still not low enough because the W14 has way too much floor exposure. And it just makes for a very wonky car on its balance. And it doesn't give the drivers really that confidence to be able to drive the car in the rear. Putting that cockpit position back will give Hamilton a really better confidence with the car and balance. This is always what he's wanted. He's been asking about it from the beginning of the year, and now we're finally going to get that. And they said that they're about to bring it back about 15 millimeters. I mean, the Red Bull car is about 25 millimeters back, but they don't really need to bring it back as far as the Red Bull car. And I don't think that's the exact same concept. It can't be because of the way that the rear is made. And now they're actually changing their front suspension, the way that the front works. They're able to probably bring it back just that tidy as bit even with its really weird gearbox position. So balance, driver confidence, all of that being put into play with the car now that is a better base model. The expectations for Mercedes go up higher, but the reality is we won't get a car that's just gonna start flying in Monaco. It will be a car that takes time and the real, I guess, W14B spec, when we finally get to see it perform, be Spain. It might honestly be Spain if they really nail everything on the coffin. If they nail what they get now in Monaco and what they essentially add to it in Spain. Like we said, front suspension, side pods, and the floor, upper floor, and under floor. But that still leaves out some probably optimization to that real front wing to be able to optimize it for its new aeroflow concept. Probably even working on the rear suspension for a bit. They haven't worked on a diffuser at all a little bit too. So a lot of things are still needed to be added to the car for it to really work how we think it's going to work. So yeah, expectations should not be that high. Don't be just excited just yet as to what they can really bring in this new car. It will come, but it won't come right now. So that is where most people's heads should be at. Don't expect this to be a masterclass of a Grand Prix. And really the shock factor, I don't think will happen just yet. It will be exciting to see this car, and as soon as this car is out on track and I see some type of performance, I'll talk about it. I will try and bring in the pictures of when they come out of when they're in the paddock and stuff. We might actually see those today. We might see them tomorrow. It really depends on who takes the pictures, especially Albert Fabrega. If he's able to capture those pictures of the W14, I will put them onto either my community page or I'll make a video about it, depending on how much really information we get. If it's just a simple picture, it's not really gonna do much for me, but yeah. Let's see what happens and let's see what this W14 can extract here in Monaco. 
Let me know your thoughts down below. Please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world. And peace.